here's what, so I will share this with you. And I'm going to give you all this in, in a very transparent way. We weren't going to show this if Kalisha had shown up today. For those who are visiting, Reverend Boyd, one of our original members, he passed here a, few, a couple of years ago. And Michael Boyd, his son, is deacon in our church. He passed just the other day. And if Kalisha, the daughter or granddaughter, would have been here, we would not have done this because it compounds the hurt. I'm not showing this to you. We're not showing this so you all can feel the hurt. What we want you to see is the life of the church as it is explained by this family. The hmm. yeah, uh, recording our story of how we came to know Greater New Life Missionary Baptist Church. My partner is my dad, Roger Boyd, and that's my dad. So let me tell you how I came to know Greater New Life Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I remember my first memories of uh, the Greater New Life Missionary Baptist Church, where we started out at, at Jackson Memorial. Yeah. And we were kids, so wherever our parents went, that's where we went. And we got introduced to not only the Lord, but we got introduced to some real characters on that bus. Mm -hmm. We had a bus that went around every neighborhood and picked people up and some of those guys that you met at Sunday school, you wouldn't want to meet them nowhere else but Sunday school. Right? <laughs> so God toned them down a little bit. So, not only was it um, a learning experience, but it gave you somebody else to, to play with and be around with. You know, so, kind of like a, another brother or sister or something like that. Because that's what it ended up being, you know. Some of those people that you met on the church bus or some of the people that now, they're like your friend, like your brother. Mm -hmm. So one day, it was a change of location. We were at Massive Business College where they had a room and they set up the table, but we still had familiar people like Reverend, Reverend Green and the Peters, the Blunts the Starks, and all the other kids of the church, you know, the, these are the, are the families, the original family, the Peters, the Boys, the Blunts, uh, the Grays, anyway, all of us still hung out, so we still had a, had a bond, so once we stayed at that place for about, I guess maybe a year or so, we, uh, end up going to another place on Camelton Road. So, you know, we, we kids, so we follow where our mom and them take us. That's where we went. So, after we got over there, we we got to be known. Okay, our parents were the founding members and we were the original kids, you know. We call ourselves the children of New Light. And so we are very grateful to God for increasing us and making us Bond because you know this is going on our 50th year, and we still treat each other with love and respect and like brothers and sisters. And so nowadays, most of us have moved to leadership positions. I'm a deacon, and we got a couple of mothers, and we got people all over the church. You know, I just say um, from that group, well, they ordained me as a deacon in 2010. And so that was one of the best moves that I ever made because most of the men that I grew up um, admiring and looking up to, like my dad had been a deacon since I was a little boy, and most of the older deacons were still intact. It just was a little bit older. So when they voted me in and wanted me to be a deacon, that was such a, it was like a 360 moment, full circle because it, you know, I, that was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me because I never thought that I would be a deacon. You know, so we just continue to try to show love and follow Christ's lead and example and, and I always trust God. One of my um, favorite songs was what Reverend Green used to say was, um, I know I got religion, yeah, yeah. No, I got religion, yeah, yeah. No, I got religion, yeah, yeah. And the world can't do me no
Amen. And let's thank God for yeah. being yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It was also in that same conversation where Reverend Boyd had made it uh, made the statement that the first two who were baptized here in the church, the first one that was baptized was actually Valerie Boyd. And uh, so their legacy and their attachment here to our church and to our fellowship is sincere, it's heartfelt, and we all feel the loss, but at the same time, we all will celebrate the lives and the memories and the love. Uh, there was only one person he ever told me he stayed away from, and that was Cassandra, because they went to school out there in West Georgia. He said every time he saw her, he just want to run from her, because he knew she was going to tell the Star family about what's going on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for snitches. Amen. <laughs> I, I thank God. I thank God. Amen. And so our celebration about this particular month and this history and our history has been so favored, you can't even contain it in a month. However, let those who have a word to share now come forward. Black History Month is Herman J. Russell. Herman J. Russell was a wealthy entrepreneur who created the nation's largest first ever black owned construction and real estate company. The Herman J. Russell and Company has more than 1,200 employees and generates more than $125 million in revenue. Herman was born in Atlanta, December 23, 1930. He was the youngest of eight children and grew up in Summer Hill near Turner Field. He attended David T. Howard High School. After graduating high school, Russell worked and later earned a degree in building construction from Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. Did you know he purchased his first building at the age of 16 in 1946 for $125? After graduating from Tuskegee, he inherited his father's business, the Rogers Russell Plastering Company. He then took on larger projects that ranged from constructing <coughs> buildings to real estate investment. Within 10 years, Russell's Business expanded to include general contracting services through the Herman J. Russell Construction, Construction Company. Some of Russell's better-known project, projects include many Atlanta landmarks, the Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, the Georgia Dome, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Coca-Cola, Georgia Power Buildings, Phillips Arena, State Farm Arena, Turner Field, and some of the 1996 Olympics projects. Russell worked very closely with Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. in the 1960s. He supported the civil rights movement by paying the bill for many arrested protesters. Russell supported the campaign of Manuel Jackson the first black mayor of Atlanta, Georgia. He became the first black member and later president of Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. Over the course of his career, 
Herman J. Russell received many awards and honors. There is a middle school in Atlanta named after him, the Herman J. Russell West End Academy. Herman J. Russell died in 2014, a multi-millionaire. The Herman J. Com um, the Herman J. Russell Company still thrives today. Thank you. We're so grateful. But I do want you to know that I'm starting to know something here, church. And uh, we are going to have a song, so you all be ready to reload that up right now. Amen. But here's the thing. We started off two years ago with an understanding. We would be here from 11 to 11.45. Now, you all have packed so much into this day, and I don't know why all y'all here. I don't know what's going on. But you ain't going to make me think that there's anything other than a brief service. However, I get sick and tired of y'all trying to make the sermon one minute long. Amen. But uh, we thank God because all of this is the life of the church and the examples that we see with these young folks and hearing from our church history. I'm just celebrating each and every one of you. We're so glad to see all of you this morning. Amen. 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 Grateful to see the images of Shirley Chisholm, uh, uh, the first black woman, the first African American period. Now, I think in Reconstruction there was one, but the uh, first black woman to run for president here in these United States. She was bold, she was brash, uh, she was unapologetically, unapologetically who she was. She was not scared. And at the same time, grateful to see her image gracing us here today. God bless you. Uh, our song, and then we will go forward with a word of encouragement through God's scriptures. Oh, way down, ya 
Genesis chapter 37, there is a word from the Lord that will continue to strengthen and empower us as we go forward. Genesis chapter 37, I will read starting at verse number 8, which will give us clarity for our discussion here though brief it shall be here this morning. I will say your announcements are well intact. For those who have not updated your church information, please look at the QR code that is in your bulletin. It will allow you to update your personal information. And if you also need to upload pictures for our church collage, uh, that can be done also. If you need some assistance, Sister Niger Green Patrick will be able to assist you also, if you have a desire to participate in the diabetes 
uh, extended program, they are signing up new members. They would meet every Wednesday virtually. And so that actually has been a life-changing program. Please see her also following morning yes. worship. Genesis chapter 37, starting at verse number 8. This gives the understanding of our discussion here briefly today. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeyance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves mm -hmm. to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk for just a few minutes from the idea, big dreamer, beware. <laughs> big dreamer, beware. We ask, O oh God, that you make your word clear and plain here this day. Let me, dear Lord, have brevity but power with every word that we make it clear that for those who are given the visions, for those who are given the dreams, they are also given a responsibility. It's a heavy weight to bear, but to sit down on it is just not an option. Now, dear Lord, let every word that is used be to glorify thee the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, and my friend, I do ask in the name of Jesus, have your way in thy son's name. Amen. Amen. Big dreamer, beware. Big dreamer, beware. So in this particular moment, we find where the dream of those who are the dreamers, are the engines that start something new in the world. Those who have yet not seen something, but they get an insight in a vision or a dream as to how to make something happen. Those are special people. Hmm. When we start looking at the fact that inventions are not always improvements on other things that are made, the reality is in many cases, someone got an image and then turn it into a reality by plowing away at it. But it's, it's, it's the dreamers to whom don't always get the credit. But even with those who are dreamers and who are gifted, quote unquote, would tell you, you don't know how many times I failed in making my dream a reality. Yeah. And I had to start from scratch all over again. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a matter of just a dream and a vision. It's a matter of the persistence that goes along with the spirit mm -hmm. that truly mm -hmm. makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Here is where as we look at our lives, we're looking at one of the greatest dreamers in our text. Just to take you to the story, I do want you to know that some dreams are also classified as revelations. Revelations are those where you are given an insight that doesn't espouse you to think bigger or to want more, but a revelation is where something is shown that shall come to pass. Something that will take place. The only problem with revelations in many cases is that you are not always given the how to mm -hmm. make it happen. But you are shown that the end result is that it shall happen. And here is where Joseph was given in his dreams and understanding. Not only for himself, but Joseph was able to interpret dreams for others. But this dream for this second youngest son of a man who was then deemed the name Israel, also known as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Here we know that Jacob is right now, whose name is then changed to Israel. This, the grandson of Abraham, this, the son of Isaac. He had these boys, 12 of them. These boys were had, well, let's just put it out there for what it is. These 12 different boys were, were born through four different women. They didn't always get along. The two youngest boys, 
Joseph and Benjamin were with one of the handmaids, or with the wife, if you will, that he really wanted to love. And then he had to take on another woman. And then they were competing for babies. And they said, well, you be with my handmaid, you have a hand. Okay, read the story for yourself. I ain't lying. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> Other than that, you can watch it on Murray uh, Povich, where they say, you are the father. <laughs> so here we find where with Joseph, he is that second to the youngest. But Joseph is somebody who's different than the rest. The other boys are raised to go out and to fend for themselves, to work for themselves, to get calluses on your hands, to learn a trade, how to be able to work in the field. They have learned to build buildings. They have learned to do work. Joseph is a thinker. Joseph is one who sits back and pontificates about the ups and the downs of life. Joseph is the one who not only sees the building but makes sure that he leans enough to know if it is askew but does nothing to fix it up or to make it any better. Joseph is someone who is a thinker. He is someone who is a dreamer in so many different ways, so much so that his daddy gave him this special colorful coat. It was Joseph. Joseph is the one who's the writer of poems. Joseph is the one with flair. Joseph is a fancy. And so Joseph is the one who the rest of you all in the family are sick and tired of. <laughs> Joseph has these dreams and in this one text that we read Joseph has this second dream where he comes and he shares you know the problem with people like Joseph is sometimes if the Lord gives you something special sometimes you just need to keep it to yourself Amen. sometimes you need to watch the Lord move but you don't have to tell everybody Amen. well I'm going to tell you because I was there sitting at the dinner table and while I was at the dinner table because they had invited me over and here is where, where daddy had sat down and Joseph came in late like he always does <coughs> food was already set up there was a long table all the other brothers were there and here is where Joseph comes in and says wait a minute before you all bless the food I want you to know that I've had another drink and Joseph looks at his brothers and says for one in this last dream the moon and the, and, the, and the sun bowed down to me. He says, and not only that, there were 11 stars in the dream. They bowed down to me also. And so the family looks around and says, wait a minute. There's 11 sons. You said we're going to bow down to you? But here's what daddy spoke up and said. I can understand you thinking that about your brothers. But are you going to say that me as the sun and your mama as the moon are going to bow down to you also? Mm -hmm. In the scripture it says, verse number 11, that here is where the brothers envied Joseph. But what it really reads is, in King James, but what it really reads is, they actually despised Joseph. Mm -hmm. They had decided at that point that this joker is crazy. Mm -hmm. Who is he to think we're going to bow? We are the oldest. We are the most skilled. We are the ones who if anybody's going to bow down, he's going to bow down to us with his soft hands. Mm -hmm. And here's where the text gets crazy because even the father hid this in his heart, not knowing what God was saying. Dreamers have to be careful. Because not all the world is going to back your dreams. Right. Many of you are here knowing good and well you had some dreams of certain things you wanted to do in this world and you shared your dream with that parent or that person who you thought was going to support you and they shot you down. Mm -hmm. Made you feel like, who are you to think that you can have something so special? Mm -hmm. Who are you to think that you can go and be as, as, as trained as you say you want? Who are you to think that that dream is there for you. Now you just sit your little self down somewhere. And so many of you are here today because you know you've either had to be humbled by someone else's assessment of your dream. Or you had to sit back and wait. And or you had to honestly have that itching spirit in your soul where you said I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you. I am somebody special. God did give me this thing. And I ain't going to see my grave until I get it out of my system. Well, However, you live with your dreams. Whether you've been dream denied, dream deferred, or dream realized. What I want to share with you today is for the dreamers, please beware. First point is, is that dreams can enlighten you. 
Dreams can enlighten you to get you to a point where you see something more than what is. They can allow you to see the illumination of the joy that is around you. Many of us live in our silos, sometimes of darkness. But dreams can let you know there is light at the end of the tunnel. Moving quickly, I want you to know also that dreams can empower you. Dreams can make you feel like every day is the blessing. I got up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Yes. But at the same time, the Lord's going to help me step by step by step to move in the right direction. Yes. Dreams can empower you to let you know I'll kneel before no man, but I'm going to stand before God. Mm -hmm. Dreams can empower you to let you know. Try to talk about me just as much as you please. Mm -hmm. The more you talk, dreams can let you know I am only going to be bolder the more you try to hold me back. Mm -hmm. You can be enlightened by dreams. You can be empowered by dreams. But also, my friends, dreams can encourage you. For there will be those moments in your lives when you're going to need the encouragement to let you know that God's got you through it all. God is never going to let you go. And that God has never failed you. And so quickly to my close, I'd say to all of you Josephs that are in here, big dreamer, beware. Because of what Joseph said at the table, you see, the next portion of the scripture shows where the brothers decided we're going to get rid of Joseph. Mm. And they sold their, blood, their brother into slavery. Mm. They sold him in such a way and then they lied about him. An animal might have killed Joseph's daddy mm. and they put animal's blood on his fancy little coat mm. and gave it to daddy and daddy's heart was broken because all daddy knew was that the last time I talked to my son I looked at him like he was crazy and told him, shame on you for thinking we're going to bow down to you. Well. Daddy's heart was broken. He couldn't relive that moment. Daddy couldn't feel like I can only support my child because now all daddy knew was that my son is gone. The brothers knew that they had sold Joseph into slavery. They took him pretty much down the road and, and, and not only allowed him to be taken off by a caravan, but made sure that Joseph was not going to come back home. Well. For Joseph was gifted. But then I want you to know here, dreamer, you might be sold down the road by your family. You might be cut off by your own community. And for some of you, they might tell you you don't have what it takes. But here's what Joseph lets it be known. That if God gave it to you, nothing in man can ever take it from you. Even though Joseph was sold into slavery, look at Joseph's journey. At every stage, God was moving Joseph in the right direction. He was sold into slavery, started reading folks' dreams, and they would come to him and found himself in a privileged position. Even the king said, I had a troubling dream. And they said, we got a slave by the name of Joseph. Took him out of prison. Joseph read the man's dream. Oh, there was another fellow who was a cook. He had another dream. And it turned out the cook cooked some food in his dream and then he was beheaded not too long. Well, he died. And so here's what Joseph was able to tell what the dreams were, whether you liked it or not. Then we know some trifling that had happened. Because here's where the king's wife tried to hook up with Joseph and tried to grab his coat and say he tried to put his hands on me. And then they locked him up for some bogus charges. But while he was in prison, God was moving on Joseph. And God was bringing folks to Joseph to still share a word from the Lord to give insight and delight. For even in battles, they would come to Joseph to give them guidance. And so when the king realized that Joseph was an asset, they pulled him up into a high place. Joseph was then made the governor over all the resources during the time of a drought. And it was Joseph who, in his privileged position, oh, and also they didn't know his name was Joseph when they gave him a fancy position. They changed his name. And it was Joseph who, in the midst of a drought, was able to bless his daddy and to bless his mama and his 11 brothers and to give them resources at a time they needed it most. Yeah. I'll say to you, dreamer, big dreamer, beware. There are those around you who might want to snatch your dream. There are those around you who might not understand your visions. There are those who might not understand what it is that you're all about and might try to deny your revelation. But hang on to these words that only what you do for Christ is going to last. Only what you do for Christ is going to last.
victory. You can change the world at any age. Just know you got it in you. God gave it to you. Now share it with those around you. But first you need to receive the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. By letter by Christian experience as a candidate for baptism. I offer Christ to each of you. If you will, please stand. If you want to give your life to the Lord, now is your time to come. I know many of you got doubters, player haters, all that kind of stuff. You keep on dreaming. But when you wake up from your dream, you make this thing happen. Because God knows we truly need you. give it to you because he knows you can carry it out if you just trust. To the all wise and mighty God be power and glory henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say Amen. Amen. 